All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to, I believe this is episode 71 of my FX Buddies. Nope, this is 72. Okay, listen up. Yes, I'm speaking softly, but I have all my controls up. Um, it, I have to do this now or it's not going to get done. And believe me, you are going to want to see this. This is one you're going to want to share. You're going to want to go to the blog. There's two videos on the blog. Not one, but two videos on the blog. Everyone's going to want to watch one, the other one only. Some are going to watch. Okay. But, um, yeah, this is 72. Okay, and it is Tuesday here in America. It is currently Tuesday, June 18th, 2024. I should get this posted on that date. But anyway, YouTube. This is a message to YouTube. Anything that I show in this video is able to be used under the fair use act disclaimer act whatever it's called and this is for teaching commenting critiquing so that covers that now if you are watching this or you think you're watching this <laughs> on youtube you're not this is the podcast with a static image you're going to want to look below that box that you think is a video and the word more, you see the word more. Click on the word more. And the another little box will open. It will have a link. Oh, plus I have my window open, so <laughs> you might hear cars going by. Anyway, the link to the blog will be in that box. Also, if you're listening somewhere else, that's just the podcast whatever they have there like info more description whatever they call their little box open that box and there's a link to the blog with the videos okay awesome rss.com has a transcript the blog oh the blog address my fx buddies dot blogspot dot com all right, so let's get into it. So, oh, okay, they're still in the holiday, right? And tomorrow is another holiday. So they have a holiday inside of a holiday. But anyway, we here in America have a holiday too. It's called Juneteenth. So we'll be on holiday tomorrow. But I know some people are probably going to say, oh, they just had this special holiday but it is not a special holiday it's a holiday that Sadar fought for petitioned for fought for to got it made it's on the calendar of, of Iraq's national holidays and that's that's what that is so it's not something they just overnight said hey we're having another holiday they already knew this holiday was coming but this is the first time it's being uh, celebrated na nationally but still, only the people who want to celebrate that are going to. And so far, um, Eid al Adha is going good. They're partying. They're out at night. In fact, go to, what's the Twitter? I probably shouldn't do this, but I did it anyway. The Iraqi government. What the heck? How come it's not here? Well, whatever. Um, I think it's, I will look for the Iraqi government on Twitter. Today they put out a beautiful video showing um, some of the courtyards that have been rebuilt and showing the people out at night having a good time. Okay, so let's get into it. So the title of this blog, and this actually came out yesterday. What are the consequences? Oh, 
sorry if you hear this. Um, I'm watching a interview of someone on a rocks TV, so you might hear them talking. Just ignore them. What are the consequences of Saudi Arabia's decision on the global economy? Now, I normally don't talk about this, right? You know, normally, well, June 9th was the day, right? That supposedly the 50-year agreement did not get uh, renewed. But this was in Iraq's news. So I thought I'd bring it up. And it's Nabil Marsumi. Does that name sound familiar? He's a professor of economics. Nabil Marsumi, but they talked to him on TV. Uh, he gets interviewed quite a bit. So he revealed the implica implications. Look, I'm so excited. <laughs> Let me just calm down. Okay, okay. Um, the implications of Saudi Arabia's decision not to renew the economic agreement with the United States of America. So this is something they're talking about in Iraq. Uh, let's see. But this now, for this instance, he wasn't uh, interviewed. He made a blog post on probably Facebook, or he has a blog somewhere. Saudi Arabia's decision not to renew the economic agreement known as the Petrodollar Agreement, which was signed with the U.S. in 1974 for a period of 50 years and related to pricing oil in dollars, would encourage other oil producing countries to sell oil in currencies other than the dollar but wait here's the last sentence he added it is expected that this decision if if actually implemented so he he doesn't even know for sure right will weaken confidence in the dollar globally decrease its value raise interest rates Increase inflation levels and weaken weakened the U.S. bond market. And you know what? All of those things could very well happen, but they're not going to happen overnight. And I just, I don't talk about it here because it's not related to the RV, but there's plenty of people who are like, oh, the dollar's going down. You know, it's the end of the world, right? But, um, the dollar will never completely go away. Just like um, the Great British Pound. That was the reserve currency. That was once the reserve currency, right? It's not anymore, but it's still in existence. So I feel, plus, okay, I listen to Jim Ricketts, I listen to Andy Sheckman. Those are just two people, right? And they're on the side of we have time um now you know there's other people that i like to listen to david morgan i think he's a silver guy he's like oh yeah the dollar's done you know <laughs> we're gonna see all those things that this article pointed out we're gonna see those he thinks probably by the end of this year we're gonna see some of the effects so there's both sides of the argument out there but i just I never talk about it because it doesn't have anything with the RV. But since this was in Iraq's news, I was like, oh, this would be perfect. I can post this and I have a little talk about it. Oops, oops, oops. I don't know why sometimes that pops up and gets loud. Okay, so that's that. Now, this article came out yesterday. If you listen to other places, you probably heard them talk about it. But Mohammed Saleh, well, here's the title. Advisor to the Prime Minister, Iraq is safe from any international financial risks. So since there wasn't a lot of news, this was like the biggest news yesterday. But he's really not saying anything new. But what I find interesting is he says cash issuance mechanisms are one of the exclusive powers of the Central Bank of Iraq. And I do find it interesting that they're talking about this when the ATMs are being put out, right? But anyway, uh, let's see. He brings up the law that talks about how the CBI is its own entity again and, and some of their functions, managing cash liquidity, building monetary foundation. So it is an important article, but it's not saying anything we didn't already know, right? 
Iraq is a cornerstone of regional and international financial cooperation institutions in the scope of combating money laundering and money laundering crimes, crime and terrorism. So if you didn't hear about that or I know some people want to see the article. Here it is for free. You don't have to join anything. You don't have to pay anything. And here's the link. If you click the link, it'll take you to the actual article. Okay, let's see. What else? Here, check this out. There's going to be six Iranian polls. They don't call them polls, but uh, Iran is going to have elections, right? Since what, three people died in that helicopter crash or a plane, whatever it was. So there's so many Iranians in Iraq. They're going to have six places for them to vote. Whenever, whenever that is. I don't care when it is. I just thought that was interesting. Okay, here. Um, details of the Memorandum of Understanding signed between Iraq and Honeywell. Yeah, who cares? That's boring stuff. I don't care about that. But I know some of you do. So the article's here on the blog for you to read. It's quite lengthy. <laughs> but I know some people like to read stuff like that. I could care less. Okay, look at this. Here is a video. Now this is the one I said only some people are going to watch. I didn't even watch it all. It's about an hour. It's 59 minutes and something. This is in English. Okay. This particular video is in English. The central bank. Oh, no, no, no. This is. Uh, I apologize. Okay. This is the one that you're going to want to share. This is why you're going to send people to this particular blog post. So, the title, because I was able to uh, translate the title. The Central Bank, a new vision for its economic policy. And here's the video description. The Iraqi government has developed an economic vision regarding borrowing policy. It consists of directing borrowing paths, paths, it's a hard word for me to say, towards development aspects through financing strategic projects. But now when you read the transcript, and I do, I, I want you to watch it, even though it's in Arabic, they show images of money, images of banks, some of the economic people that that you read about in the articles they're interviewed it's just a short video it's two minutes and 37 seconds but youtube put a transcript so well okay youtube put the transcript in arabic but i translated the transcript to english so you know how i feel about youtube's transcripts they're not the best but it has um Certainly, Iraq techniques used will contribute to acceleration. But here's one sentence. Let me see. Some of the things that the CBI does, right? They talk about the importance of leaving the selling window. Foreign currency and reliance on remittances. Foreign banking with an increase in gold reserves and offering new issues of high quality currency. Now it doesn't say what denomination, if they're lower or the three zero ones. In fact, it doesn't even show when this word, when these words are said at the two minute and 26 second mark. It's not even an image of money. It's a guy talking. So, but there's the words. And so when you read this transcript, at least when I read this transcript, I was like, this is nothing about the video description. But anyway, okay, so that came out, that just came out this evening, maybe even like six hours. Oh, let me see. Uh-oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. At the time of, um, oh. It doesn't say the time. And I'm not gonna. But anyway, you can see it only has 64 views. 
So it hasn't been out that long. All right. Now I want to go back over here. Okay, so that's one thing that you will want. You know, I don't say it often when I say this is one to share with your non-believing people or your people who are down. I think that's a good video. Okay, now there's another video, but more importantly, I want to talk about this article. Behind the scenes of an exciting session of merchants and restaurant owners who invested, and look, they even have invested in quotation marks, in the exchange rate difference in Iraq. Now, this is part of a longer article, okay, which I have here. The longer article is probably at the bottom. Let me see. I hope that's not making you dizzy. Yeah. So this article right here, Iraq's banking system blighted by corruption. You're going to want to read this. It goes through a history. It has pictures. I like pictures because um, it shows the people, right? The real, um, the real well, let me see, how some of the people live, because I know there are some people that still live pretty poorly. But, um, yeah, so this is a very good article to read. There's a chart here. All right. So th this is an old ATM. This is one of the old ones. This is an ATM from 2012. So, yeah, I hope. And tomorrow's a holiday, so you could take time to visit the blog and read. See, it looks like it's long, but it's not. It's just because of the pictures. But look at that. What is that there? But apparently, that is some good grub right there. <laughs> All right. So let's go back up to uh, so in this time of the bank banking system, you know, sucking basically <laughs> for the people right um here is a way that some people were making money let me get back up here i'm almost there bear with me okay so this story that I'm about to pretty much read to you is in that longer article that's at the very bottom of the blog. All right. So the National Review, the scenes of investing in the exchange rate difference in Iraq. So they were taking advantage. You could call this an arbitrage situation, but they were just taking advantage. This is one of the ways where businessmen Merchants and restaurant owners benefited by operating their money in this trade by withdrawing the dollar from the central bank and selling it on the black market, which achieved huge and rapid profits in this way. However, recent actions of the central bank caused problems between these partners due to losses. So I like this because it's showing for years they were making money off of this. And we've been hearing about all these efforts that the CBI has been making to curtail the money-making opportunity. And here you have some people admitting they're taking losses now, right? So despite recent efforts for reforms, challenges remain, and well-connected businessmen are still exploiting loopholes in the foreign currency sales window managed by the Central Bank of Iraq, to make obscene amounts of money. And when I think of that, there's a movie where <laughs> Richard Gere, well, Richard Gere is in a movie called Arbitrage. If you haven't seen that, you should watch it. But I think he's in another movie where he says obscene amounts of money. Yes, a Pretty Woman. I think it's in Pretty Woman he says that when they're about to shop. I think he says we're about to spend obscene amounts of money. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. See how my brain works. Anyway, so 
they were making obscene amounts of money from the margin between the official exchange rate and the black market rate okay so you wonder why this took so long people were making goo gobs of money of course they don't want the rate to change of course they don't want um tracking because it's cutting into their money they were making so he says to know that there's still room for manipulation um the way they circumvent these new procedures are falsifying invoice arrangements at border crossings and manipulating prices of good by set setting inflated prices so you see why they needed that um that escada system so all of that right there can stop well i'm sure they'll find a way to still continue to do a little bit but for the most part much of that is going to stop okay so then they talk about so here by accessing a government-run platform offering, see, government-run, by accessing a government-run platform offering U.S. dollars at the official rate, a businessman lured other traders with a deal prom promising them huge profits from the spread between official and black market rates. Sources involved told the National. That's where this, this article is. With hundreds of millions of Iraqi dinars in circulation, traders received unexpected cash gains. But as days and months passed, the businessman found himself unable to pay his debts, leaving the merchants in a precarious situation. So we're at uh, 21 minutes. All right. So he says we can't continue down this path. It's time to cut our losses. So see, they this here is proof that things have changed it's taken way longer than we wanted let's see so he says at least half at least i have half of my capital in my hands better than nothing and they have a saying we say that whoever loses half his money is not a loser because you still have the other half right there is no business that allows you to hit the jackpot like taking advantage of the exchange rate margin in a short period of time, which is why we invested heavily with him. So that's one of the people who invested with that. Isn't that great? Don't you think that's good information? I mean, it doesn't mean we're going to the bank tomorrow, but it shows these people were making money for years. And now, because the changes are in effect, they're not making money that way anymore. So people who say, oh, nothing's changed. You have it right here, black and white. People who are making money off the difference of the parallel market, they're not anymore. All right, here's the second video. This one, I only watched about six minutes. But remember Frank Gunter, Professor Frank Gunter? He put out that detailed report on the exchange rate well guess what launch of new ibbc advisory council report with professor frank r gunter and this guy right here so i think this is frank down here yes i i know him on a first name basis no, i'm just kidding um mr gunter whatever the professor i think this is the professor down here this is the ibbc guy and this guy right here is ahmed tabachali ahmed tabachali tabachali he is um he's rich he's rich and he's smart he writes a lot of reports on the stock market and things that affect the stock market so he's there too um the first few minutes that I listened to were all in English. I bet you Mr. Tabak Charlie speaks English as well. So I look forward to watching that. This is 59 minutes. I know not everyone is going to watch that, but I know some of you are. I'm going to. All right. So th these two paragraphs right here were the video description. Here's a little bit from the article on a webinar organized by the iraq britain business council 
which is the IBBC, on Tuesday, June 19th, Professor Frank Gunter of Lehigh University and Dr. Ahmed Tabakchali of AFC Iraq Fund and expert blogger, right, on Iraq News, discuss the drivers of the Iraqi dinar exchange rate. So I, I doubt there's a new rate in there. You know, I doubt they're going to talk about the date of the RV, but I still look forward to hearing what they have to say. Uh, so it says that the event marks the official launch of the IBBC's new white paper on de-dollarization of Iraq economy, which can be downloaded here. And I bet you we've already seen that. I bet you that's that report that we've seen. But I didn't click on it. Um, but when you can see this is a preview. Blog, I'm doing this video and the blog is not posted yet. When it is actually posted, this where it says downloaded here, this will be a live link. And if you didn't already download that report, that's in English, by the way, um, you could do that there. Okay, check this out. This is just for laughs. Okay, really not funny. But I think it's funny because no, I will laugh at it because <laughs> no one got hurt that we know of. And I'm just, you could go here and read it. One of Biden's guards is robbed at gunpoint. So a Secret Service agent for the president was robbed at gunpoint in California. Only in California would that happen. <laughs> and it isn't um, Tustin. The city of Tustin isn't even near L.A. It's south of L.A., right? But that's how the that's how people do. But anyway, so uh, he didn't get hurt. His bag was stolen, so he was smart, you know, just let him have your bag, not your life. But anyway, so you can read that if you want. Uh, that's there. Okay, let's see. This is interesting. Iraq is the first Arab country in developing oil pipelines, but clearly that's not right. Um, what There was something special about these oil pipes. Oh, first in the amount, I think. But whatever, you know, it's always nice for them to be recognized. And I'm sure we're helping. Some of that technology is probably ours. And then they recognize a Dutch company called Royal something. I don't know how to say that word. But all right, that's there. Oh, this is hilarious. Um... There's other stuff, you know, I say there's other stuff happening in the news, but it's not RV related. So in that news, we put some other group on the terrorist list, right? So an Iraqi faction provides good news to its supporters. We have been included on the terrorist list. So here we are thinking that we're going to upset them. And the the guy, here's his name, the secretary general whatever his name is, it's right there, right? He tells his followers, great news, the great Satan, which that's us, right, has labeled us a terrorist. So if you want to read this, that's, that's you know. <laughs> I have that article there, if you want to read that. Uh, we could skip that, okay. Now this, I don't like, no, no, no. Is this the one? These are reports. Look how long this is. I know not everyone's going to read this, but some people are. Oh, okay. Here's an article about, so there's a new lady. Here's her name, Tracy Jacobson. She's up right now being reviewed or something to see if she's going to be the next American ambassador. So far, it's not going good for her. But, um, it says, how does Iraq deal with the confrontational policy of the prospective American ambassador? So I hadn't posted it or talked about it, but this is a pretty good uh, summary of what's been happening for about two weeks now. And yeah, if you care to read that, um, it's there. 
for you to read that. Now, what's this one? Uh, there's other articles there that you can read. Okay, there was a break right there. Um, my my computer is full again. All right, this article right here. I'm not happy about this, but it it came out. It says the American administration. So this is what we're saying according to this article. We are tired of the Middle East and the priority is elsewhere. So my initial thought when I saw that was, I bet they're tired of us too. <laughs> so there's some pretty touchy words in here. So I'm not really going to talk about this. But here's these two dangers. Uh, there's one. And there's the other. All right. And yeah, so it, it it it's not really talking saying just Iraq, but the fact of the whole Middle East and whose fault is that that the whole Middle East is in turmoil right now? Yeah, you know, depending on who you speak to, they're gonna all right, even though I'm deleting stuff, it's apparently not enough. So I'm going to have to end this. But this is a pretty important article in my opinion because it deals with why I believe this is going to go on until September. So the geopolitical mess that Iraq finds themselves stuck in the middle because of us, that's what this article is about. Now there's a more positive article um, this one here international finance economic reform in Iraq is witnessing an increasing pace and we have invested about two billion dollars so this international finance is the subsidiary of the World Bank so read that this is positive why would they put two billion dollars in Iraq economy to not believe it's going to change. I apologize. So you know all the trouble I'm having, you know this is good. This is some good information here. And last but not least, this one article I know a lot of people are not going to read. A new era in Iraq's relations with the West. This is good too, but it is long. It gives a history, U.S. military presence then and now. Is Iraq's fight against ISIS really over? They had some guy come out yesterday and say, ISIS is done. We, we got them all. <laughs> Rocky transition already underway. So see, policy recommendations. And then here are some meetings with this group, this uh, committee they put together. HMC to move along the troops leaving, right? All right, so I'm going to end it because it's probably going to tell me that it's full again. But please, please, please spend some time on this blog. Definitely watch that video, read the transcript. If you have time, watch the other video. I'm going to watch it. Matter of fact, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to go watch it. So I want to thank you. Um, Everyone who watches in the comments you guys leave are good comments. Thank you. Um, accumulate while we wait for the rate to appreciate. Don't miss any mails and pay all your bills. Enjoy your Wednesday. Unless something spectacular comes up, I probably won't post. And um, if there's a join, follow, subscribe, whatever button, wherever you're enjoying this content, Please tap it, swipe it, click it, whatever. And then when I do update, you'll be notified if all things work as they're supposed to. So enjoy the rest of your morning, night, noon, whatever time frame you're enjoying this content. And until next time.